so guys why did i say it was a tough thing for akash to write career episode because we got two times or three times two times two times contact from the co that is a case officer we had to reply back accordingly hi guys and welcome back to rt vlogs i hope you all are doing really good so before starting this video we would like to share something with you all so guys in our previous video that was i guess uh, our emotional pr journey so in the video we got lot of love there were a lot of comments and there were some comments which uh, we were quite harsh yeah, yeah. <laughs> some people even said that our journey was just a joke or uh, you know it was nothing uh, compared to any struggle whatever it is yeah uh, there was no struggle yeah. you don't know what we are going through and yeah. there were such comments well guys that video was to just share our experience we never said that only we are struggling yes and some people have said that you know we have our struggle is nothing you yeah. don't know what we are going through we are not comparing our journey with anybody and else Yeah. So we just wanted to share our journey with uh, all the viewers. That's it. And let me make it clear once again. We never said that only we struggled to come to Australia. I know uh, right now Very the point high. requirement is super high. Uh, ours was at least two years back. It has shooted up because people are scoring those points. So yes, the requirements may change uh, every year. When we started thinking of. applying for our pr journey that time the basic cutoff was 60 but by the time we applied it had gone to 65 so yes each and every year you will find different requirements you will find that the immigration process is becoming you know challenging you have to cope up with that and it may get harder every year this journey itself is very challenging and we know that so uh, the reason why i got emotional in that video because first of all we got we took so much time to get our pr our life was on hold secondly the borders were shut and you guys know what happened in the, the year 2020 like all the crazy things that happened this year that's the reason why i got very emotional because everything was happening at the same time and you know whenever we used to get happy some sad news used to come and you know block our way to go to australia and today in this video we're going to talk about the skills assessment and how did we go about our skills assessment process if you have not watched our earlier video wherein we have explained our pr process then please go and check it out because the first step in the pr process is skills assessment and it is very important step before doing skills assessment it is very important to know your ngsco ngsco is nothing but your occupation code so once you know your ngsco so code this will give you a clarification on uh, which is the skills assessment body which you should be referring to so in this video we are going to tell you everything about skills assessment and what are the various uh, stages or steps i can say that were involved in our process for skills assessment So guys if you have not watched our previous video on how we got our PR and what are the documents needed for the main applicant as well as the secondary applicant that is me uh, everything is shared in that video I'll put up the link here make sure to click that or you can visit my channel that is Aarti Vlogs and you'll find number of videos on everything related to Australia check it out so make sure to subscribe to my channel it's absolutely free yes everybody knows that and also leave a big thumbs up if you love this video and the information that we are providing you guys so without wasting much time let's just jump into the video yeah <laughs> so guys skills assessment is nothing but assessing your skills by the relevant skills assessment body to make sure that your skills meet the australian standards obtaining skills assessment is one of the mandatory requirement for some of the visa sub classes so guys uh, we went through the engineers australia skills assessment because as per my occupation code i had to get my skills assessed through engineers australia engineers australia has something called as msa booklet so it is nothing but migration skills assessment booklet so in that they have laid down all the guidelines procedures what you have to follow for the skills assessment with engineers australia so don't forget to uh, go through this booklet which i am going to show you as the video progresses so guys we are also going to share how much cost we incurred in our skills assessment uh, that will be at the end of the video so make sure to watch the video till the end skills assessment with engineers australia requires you to have english competency score so the minimum score required is 6 in each band that is ielts 6 or equivalent uh, in each band unless you are in the exception category so this information you will find out in the msa booklet although 6 is the minimum score which is required by ea in order to get your skills assessment done but this score will not give you any points further when you are going to lodge your eoi 
so guys it's always better to score high during this phase because that will give you maximum points and the maximum points are 20 for the score of IELTS 8 or equivalent so make sure that you score those 8 points now itself uh, if you are applying for the skills assessment guys there are two pathways to migration skills so the one is uh, accredited qualifications and the other one is non-accredited qualifications. So we had to go through competency demonstration report. Because my qualification, it came under non-accredited pathway. So let's talk about how did we go through the skills assessment process. So there are two options to do your skills assessment. One is just assessing your qualification and other one is assessing your experience and qualification both at the same time. Well, the choice is up to you. However, I went with assessment of qualification plus my experience. So Akash had to write three career episodes which was a tough job i guess well, uh, it was not a tough job as such. You had to follow the guidelines which were given in the MSA booklet. Again, I'm referring over here MSA booklet because all the guidelines, all the procedures, how you have to write your or form your career episode is everything is given in the MSA booklet. Guys, career episode is nothing but a short report highlighting your skills. The career episode is any major uh, project that you have done in the past that it could be maybe in your college or um, it could be in your workplace, workplace anywhere. You have to highlight your your skills through these career episodes in order to make sure that your skills match with the Australian standards. So career episodes is all about you, what you have done, how you did that and what was your participation, what are the things you learned, how you tackled various challenges and so on. It could be a group project as well, but you have to mention what you did exactly in that group. Absolutely. In order to know what are the guidelines as per the recent MSA booklet, just type MSA booklet 2020 and you will get an MSA booklet which is uh, March, which was updated on March 2020. This is important because there are various updates. So just go through this booklet in order to know what are the various guidelines which you have to follow in order to get the in order to get a positive skills assessment. So just so I just go through a couple of elements, important elements in this MSA booklet. As you can see, IELTS requirement is still there. You have to uh, Indian Australia it accepts both general and academic. So there is there is no issue as far as academic or general module of the IELTS is concerned. You can also take a TOEFL or PD academic. So yes, so this is the required scores. You have to get six in each of the IELTS section or fifty uh, in PD academic. By the way, guys, PT score requirements have changed. So just go through the new scores which are required for PT or IELTS equivalent scores for PT. So, we have, so there are the pathways for migration skills assessment are accredited qualifications uh, or non-accredited qualifications. So under accredited, you have Australian qualification, Washington Accord, Sydney Accord, Dublin Accord, other recognized qualification. Whereas when you have non-accredited, that is, we went to non-accredited qualification, we had to go through this CDR or competency demonstration report. If the qualification is accredited by Engineers Australia, then uh, you follow this pathway. So you will get all the information basically, guys, over here in this booklet, how to apply, what are the things you should be keeping ready in order to apply for the skills assessment. I would like to just point out one more thing. So guys, this booklet also gives you all the requirements. You can see over here that this passport size photo, which is required, and the dimensions are also given. And what are the other requirements? That like the photograph should not be not more than six months, and it should be what format it should be, and so on. So read through this booklet carefully. One more thing which I would like to highlight over here is this clause. That is 2.513, which is plagiarism. Guys, this is a very important clause, and this can uh, this can affect your application if you don't stick to this clause. Apart from that, you can definitely refer other sections wherein uh, you will come across what are the minimum words required to form a good career episode, and how to form your career episode, and so on. So they have also given. Over here, a checklist. What is what is what are the various documents you should be submitting? So, guys, there is something called as fast track as well. That is, uh, they have clearly mentioned over here that fast track applications will be assigned to an assessor within the time frame advertised on a website. So, if you click over here, it will directly take you to the website. This is the Engineers Australia website. So, guys, they have clearly mentioned on the website that the current time around for standard MSA applications for non-accredited it is nine weeks before the application is assigned to a case officer. Uh, and for accredited, accredited Australian and accord qualification, it is seven weeks. So you can see that these are the turnaround times. And if you take and if you, or if you choose to go through fast track, it will be 20 working days. That is, it will be assigned to case officer in 20 working days, which is nothing but three weeks. So this is a very useful booklet, guys. Make sure that you refer correct booklet. That is, this is the recent one, I guess. If there is any other update, make sure that you are aware of this recent update. So March 2020, I think, uh, is the recent update. If you guys come across any more, any other update which is recent and March 2020, then do mention in the comment box. So guys, why did I say it was a tough thing for Akash to write career episode? Because we got two times or three times? Two times. Two times contact from the CO, that is a case officer. We had to reply back accordingly. So Akash submitted the application uh, during the end of June 2018. And guys, since I was also assessing my experience, so I had to also submit evidence in order to prove my experience. This involved offer letters, salary slips, reference letter, bank statements, income tax documents such as Form 16 and Form 26AS. So guys, these are some of the important documents 
projects which I submitted in order to get my skills assessed. And I was quite confident that I would get positive skills assessment right away, but that was not the case. So Akash got his first year contact after one month of submission of documents. So guys, I was quite nervous because I had written all the career episodes in my own words. However, CEO had raised doubts about plagiarism. Well, plagiarism is one of the major issues for many applicants who submit uh, their career episodes with Engineers Australia. So Google defines plagiarism as like, you know, taking somebody's ideas or matter and showing as if it is your own. So guys, knowingly or unknowingly, we all tend to include uh, some or other content which may not be our own work. And that's fine. However, the CEO may find this illegal and there could be serious repercussions. If the plagiarized content is more than the acceptable levels, that it is fine to have some com content because uh, we are not uh, Einstein or, you know, Newton to produce all the original work. There could be some content which may be universal. For example, there could be some standard operating procedures or there could be some safe operating procedures which could be used by many Every. industries, right? So all you have to do is you have to acknowledge the content. So guys, for my application, uh, CEO did raise doubts about plagiarized content and I'm going to tell you how did I tackle uh, this issue. So the CEO had given Akash only one month of time to address all the questions that were asked. And if I had not provided a satisfactory answer, my application would have been even rejected. So guys, over here, there was one more mistake which I did was I tried to write explanation in a hurry and I wanted to submit this explanation within that one month period. So I I did not take entire one month but I took maybe hardly a week or two although the case officer had given me one full month I submitted the explanation in a hurry I wrote the explanation justifying the queries which were asked by the CEO and I attached evidences like the screenshot of my project work or you know some of the drawings and I tried to attach as many evidence as possible you know to make sure that the CEO is satisfied with my answer usually the CEO contacts you only one time and they declare the result like if application is successful or, or it is rejected yeah but we were lucky i can say the ceo contacted us for the somewhat second. lucky yeah, somewhat lucky. Yeah. Uh, the CEO contacted us for the second time. CEO was willing to give us a second chance. chance yeah. And that CEO contact happened in the first week of September. So this time, uh, CEO accepted some of my justification. However, he, he again stressed on the plagiarism or the plagiarized content. Uh, I didn't know what to explain. Because it was his own project. Like, yes. you know, Akash was quite nervous because he had almost taken one full month to write the career episodes. For the second time when I got the CEO contact, I made sure that I take my time to read the SSS comments and I didn't hurry to submit my explanation this time. So I wanted to be 100% sure this would have been my last chance to explain why there were similarities in my content. So the assessor had clearly pointed out that there was similarity in the content with the internet. Uh, so I had to explain. However, the assessor did not point out which was the career episode. Because what happens is, uh, some assessors, the CEO, they will point out which career episode is containing some of the plagiarized content. For example, your C1, that is your career episode 1, 2 or 3, since you have to write project, 3 career episodes. Yeah, project 1, 2, 3, whichever. Yes. But in my case, uh, that was a gray area. I mean, uh, the assessor... It was more difficult for us, for yes. you especially, so to I, find out like... Like, which is the one? Yeah, so I, I didn't know whether it was in career episode one, two or three. So I had to give explanation for all the career episodes about the plagiarized content. So what I did was I again carefully went through all my career episodes. I read each and every career episode again thoroughly to understand what could be or which part could match or which part could be used maybe in other industries or it could be used in some other projects. So I had to frame the reply in such a way that it would give a valid justification for this plagiarized content. This time I did not attach any evidence. I had written only explanation and this explanation was around three to four pages. I tried acknowledging some of the books or maybe any other thing which might have been used in any of my career episodes. So I also stressed on the part that I had put my own efforts in order to frame those career episodes. I made sure that the explanation was solid and it also stressed on the career episode being my original work. So finally guys, uh, end of September 2018, we got a positive outcome. Well, it was a great relief for me because yeah. Assessor not only gave me a positive skills assessment for my qualification, but he also recognized my seven years and four months of experience. 
सो फाइनली गाइज वो ऑल सेट टू गो टू द नेक्स्ट स्टेप दैट इज लॉजिंग आर ईओ आई एंड वेट फॉर द इनवाइट So guys we would like to highlight here some of the mistakes which we did and which could be avoided by many of the applicants in order to get that speedy outcome uh, from engineers australia so read the msc booklet thoroughly and understand the guidelines provided before you start writing your career episodes one more tip that we would give you that make sure to write all your career episodes in your own words because uh, let me tell you one thing over here there are many third parties which are available on internet who claim that they will write your career episodes they will charge you some amount and they will get a positive outcome for sure however let me tell you these third parties they may use some template in order to frame your career episodes and this may land you in big trouble so guys you can refer some sample career episodes which you get online but just for your reference but make sure that you write your own career episode in your own words otherwise there could be serious repercussions like a 12 month ban with investigation from the department of home affairs and trust me guys plagiarism is a serious offense and i know some of the people who got their applications banned for almost 12 month uh, so make sure that you scrutinize all your career episodes thoroughly before you do the final submission guys if you are referring any sources don't forget to acknowledge them and even if you get a co contact don't panic because this only means that co is giving you another opportunity to explain what was what is the reason for you know whatever discrepancy which has been observed in your career episode yeah. at least you are getting a chance to explain yourself absolutely so guys as per my experience when I got my first CEO contact I was given almost 1 month but uh, I submitted my explanation in a hurry so I would suggest you don't do that take your own time but also don't delay too much because you have to submit that explanation within the given deadline you read through the queries which are raised by the uh, case officer again and again to understand them thoroughly so that you submit a solid justification so guys be generous and be polite in your explanation make sure that you format your explanation properly you address each and every uh, points which are raised by the assessor and in your explanation also mention about your genuine efforts uh, you took uh to frame these career episodes so to add up to your impression make sure to uh use good english language use sophisticated words and synonyms so guys it's natural to get tensed and stressed up when As you get such comments from the ceo don't get anxious just take a day off if you can't think of anything you know and then come back to devise a proper explanation so finally once you do all the efforts from your side and submit a reply you have to wait patiently for the outcome so now we are going to discuss about the cost which was involved in our skills assessment so ielts cost was 250 dollars for migration skills assessment cdr it uh, was 765 dollars uh, since i also went for experience assessment it was another 370 dollars so we applied for fast track as well which was for 295 dollars you have to pay some extra amount and your application will be processed faster than the normal application so definitely you have to pay some extra dollars which was which was around 295 are the mentioned and we also got a discount of $50 from engineers australia so the total cost incurred by us for our skills assessment with engineers australia was $1630 so guys that's it that was our skills assessment process and i hope this video was uh, super helpful and if you have any further questions you can comment down in the comment section so guys don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't as of now don't forget to hit that like button and also share with all your contacts and keep watching arti vlogs till then Thank <laughs> you.